In last week's episode, we arrived at Marathon and anchored outside of Boot Key Harbor to avoid the crush of boats inside. Our generator had been blowing white smoke out the exhaust for a couple of hours, and since we'd seen a lot of sargassum on this trip, Todd decided to try cleaning our water Holy strainer. Holy moly! That is crazy! What's that Seaweed. from? Seaweed. Is that the motor? This is the generator. That's the generator. You think maybe that's why it was blowing smoke? That's what I'm hoping. Oh, it's getting hot? Yes. That's what I'm hoping. So now we need to see if it's plugged all the way down. Yeah, something maybe. All right. Guys, as Tammy showed you, we got the proverbial uh, grass filling up our sea strainer problem. I'm gonna turn this thing on here in a minute. Right now, I gotta wash all this thing out. Let's see if we can clean this out a little bit. Anyway. Whoops, that worked out well. Still got a bunch of this crap in here. Sorry, filming doesn't work in the engine room when you need two hands. Previously on Spoon Drifter, we spent three years in a boatyard bringing our 40-year-old hurricane-damaged sailboat back to life. Todd, I, and four of our 10 kids knew nothing about boats when we started. But with time, we have repowered, re-rigged, and turned this boat into a home that's ready for the next big adventure before we sail to Florida and leave the U.S. for bluer waters. Oh my goodness, it is amazingly beautiful out here today. Todd had cleaned the sea strainer the night before and we were getting ready to leave for Channel 5 Bridge and hide from weather at Matacumba Cay first thing this morning. So the challenge we're having this morning is there's no water coming out of the generator. Luckily we don't have very far to go today. <sighs> so, it just can't be simple. No, Todd's working on this problem. Well, the color looks fine. So I don't know if um, any of the junk could have gotten through the strainer to the other side of the hose and plugged it up or not. I, I don't know. I'm gonna pull it off and see if it looks like there's anything in it. Outside of that, maybe it wasn't primed good enough. We'll try that next. I don't know how full you needed it here. No, what? No. You want to open it without anything on it? Do I need to repeat myself? Yes. I've never opened this up with the hose on it to see how much water just flows into the boat freely. So I have no comparison to what it is now when I open this hose up to see if it flows freely. <laughs> right? It just kind of dribbles out the end. I don't know how much water flow I should have. Right? I don't know how much should be coming through the boat through the through hole at this deep. Now this is pretty deep here. This is probably two feet below the water line. Should actually, I would think, be gushing in pretty good. So we've still got So some. I need to find something to stick down there. I guess that's not gonna make, make the turns. Corner. Only two through holes on this whole boat we didn't replace. This happens to be one of them, so we want it to be nice to it. We don't want to break it. And so next try. Tell me if the pump is running. It's not. Should I have a bung ready in case something terrible goes wrong? I have a bung here already. Oh, yep, there you go. That would be the problem. You know, see if this has any more flow. Ooh, more. That was good. There's the big yuck that was the last plug. Hey. Yeah, it looks like we got a lot more water. Yeah. So one of the beauties at this point of uh, being water rich we have the ability to actually rinse our chain off from salt water as it comes up to keep that from destroying our chain faster and sitting in the uh, anchor locker smelling. So isn't that way cool? This is the Hawks Channel. This is a, this is essentially the ocean that is separated by a reef over there. 
that makes Hawk's channel a little bit better, but look how smooth it is. Go to port about five degrees. All right. We're dodging crab pots. Okay. All right, well, the seal fell out of the water strainer when Todd put it back together and he didn't notice. So it was leaking. So we're just running on battery power alone, which is one of the great things that even when the diesel is not working, um, we still have power and can still move. Moving slowly to conserve our power, about three and a half knots. This glass out here and quite warm because there's no breeze. It's muggy. I think it's not so much that it's warm, it's really muggy. But it's beautiful. Just absolutely amazing. Okay, here's the thing guys. You know, electric boats and sailing Uma talks about never being in a hurry to go anywhere ever. Um, that's a lie. I said how many people I bought into that lie and now living this life, I recognize that it's not even about us making the schedule. It's about weather makes the schedule. Today's Wednesday. We have a big giant storm coming in on Thursday and Friday that's going to be blowing 30 knots. I'm going three knots right now. Um, we are using our electric motor to do that because it looks like this. So I have to get somewhere tonight that will protect me from those 30 knots of wind. Yeah, we try to not make those schedules, but what we have found is that at least once a week down here, there's some kind of weather coming in that dictates where we need to be and when. So the only option is to never leave. You find a comfortable spot that's protected from everything and you stay there forever, which lots of people do. Or you do have to be somewhere in a hurry sometimes. That's just how it is. So we got this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful thing here. And then to contrast that on the left side, we got that. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do anything, but it's there, making its presence known. This is the first time we've been in water clear enough to see the bottom while sailing over it. Granted, it's pretty shallow as we approach Channel 5 Bridge, but it's so cool. Sixty-three feet. Well, good because we're fifty-six. Well, we didn't hit. All right, now we're in this giant shallow bay, and we have to stay on our course very tightly. And suddenly out of nowhere we got six knots of wind. We have had nothing all day. Well, well I'm not going to complain because it'll cool the boat down and maybe keep the bugs away when we anchor. Yeah. <laughs> You're test driving it in the boat? Last Christmas, we were asked to review this sea scooter by Asiwo. It looked super cool, but unfortunately it was cold and the water in Texas at that time was pretty ugly. So we've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to use it. So what is the point of this? You hold on to it like this and then you go wee. Charger, instructions, tether. That is a heavy battery. That's awesome. It doesn't take up nearly as much room as it looked like in the box. Huh? All right. Yeah. And it's really sturdy. 35 minute run time, two to three hours to charge it. 7.7 .7 pounds, maximum depth 99 feet, 30 meters. Nobody's going that deep. 
Huh, not me. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah. It has three speeds. That's cool. Oh my gosh. Our first really beautiful water that we're going to play in. Is that what they call diving on the anchor? Playing? Well, you know, get to kill two birds with one stone. Where's your goggles? Um, Where? They were up there. And that to me. So it should be about eight feet deep here. All right, is this your first time using the fins, Liberty? Just swim around a little bit. All right, are you ready for this? Ready? It says it floats. It does? Yes. You have to hold them both off to get it to go. Right one goes, left one slows down. Or you just let go of the two buttons. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Awesome. Oh, that's so you should go check out the anchor. We've now been playing with this scooter for over two months and it's become quite a useful tool. Todd uses it to swim and dive on our anchor every time. That thing goes pretty fast, huh? So I think this thing is dad tested, kid approved. <laughs> yep, dad tested, kid approved. <laughs> that was fast, though, wasn't it? Yeah, did you turn it on higher? Yeah, that was high speed. Dad's trying to run it out of power. It's been really helpful for Abigail. It helps her keep up with us on snorkeling trips as her heart condition causes her to tire faster than the rest of us. Abby, I have to tell you something. What? Uh, you can go way deeper with that, you know that, right? Yeah, I know. Can you go fast? Uh, it runs low on battery if you go too fast. The battery life is actually really impressive. The low speed is perfect and we have yet to run out of power before we're done using it if we keep it on low. I think he's having a little too much fun. Yeah, I think so. All right, I gotta keep working. <laughs> To get ready for our overnight passage to the Bahamas, Todd and the girls are taking this opportunity to clean the bottom of our sailboat. It's mostly soft growth that comes off easily with a Scotch-Brite pad. Okay, I'm gonna clean the prop down because I have to. Use the link and discount code below to get a scooter for yourself. Okay, then roll in and do a reverse service. I'll put your head under water, hold your breath. Nope. One more time. <laughs> watch me. You want to watch me? Water. <laughs> Beautiful morning to be leaving for the Bahamas. Todd and Abigail are working on the anchor. We're a little shallow this morning. It's a little um, sketchy. Ten knots of wind. It's the day, guys. Today we are leaving the country. <laughs> I'm like super nervous, but super excited, but like, I don't even know what I feel. So many things. So 
come with us as we go to the Bahamas. Thanks for watching and join us next week while we cross to the Bahamas.